And I have to talk about Andrew first. Yeah. What did you think about the fake tears? I need to know. Okay. So bottom line, cringe, disrespectful, deceitful. It's one thing to have a feeling like a gut feeling through the pods that something is off about this guy. So Mm -hmm. the fact that I, for the first time watched, you know, um, our season and I saw the fake tears, I was in complete awe. So either I have superpowers to detect deceitfulness. (laughs) Um, yeah, I just, I just thought that like, honestly, Dallas came in with a lot of love from the men, from the women. And I think that it just, it just did not represent like what our intentions were coming into it. So it's, it was very cringe. Yes, I agree. I, my jaw literally dropped when he did that because he literally just proposed to you. So if he was willing to, it just seemed like he was there for cloud basically. So I'll say it. Um, (laughs) So obviously you're with Bartise and I don't know if, I don't know if you guys, you probably don't read comments. I wouldn't for the most part, but there's a lot, you're a fan favorite by the way, but there is a lot of people do not like Bartise because he comes off as very inconsiderate when he's in the pods or when he's talking to you, when you guys are, you know, in Malibu, all of that. Was it different being in the situation? Did he seem inconsiderate while you were there? I know like editors can cut things and make things seem differently, but he said some really like, he said some pretty rude things in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. Um, Honestly, the way that you saw our relationship unfold is exactly the way that it happens. And what I mean by that is I'm a big believer on letting people be who they are. And then let me decide if I want you to be part of my life or not. Mm -hmm. And so in that we met in such an unconventional way and we had odds against us, right? Like we could easily, you know, not made it to engagement day. So I think for me, it was um, through the different phases, like the pod phase, figuring out who I was going to choose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the the second phase of being in Malibu, first time ever seeing my fiance, still little limited distractors, right? Right. So I'm just a big believer that you've got to let people show you their true colors and then decide. Um, I think in my mind, opening my heart, my mind and my soul meant that I could not judge this man for saying the things that he said. Were they disrespectful? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Could could he have thought about it for one more second in his head before he said it? Yeah. Absolutely. So did anything change for you regarding Bartise once you were out of the pods? I, I have to imagine that when you're in the pod, you're not literally the only thing you've got is their voice and their conversation. So, and not necessarily just in physical ways, but did being able to see someone's reactions to how they say stuff and they're, you know, body movements and body language, all that. Did anything change for you once you and Bartise were out of the pause and you were with him in person? Um, it was really hard at first to put together the voice and the person. It was yeah. weird because I actually, the first day that we were together, he was in the restroom mm-hmm. and it was a little bit away from where the room was. And he asked me a question, but I was, I couldn't see him. And that was the first time that day that I felt so comfortable because if I saw him in like my face, I'd yes. be like, oh, hi. Like, <laughs> you know, you know, so it was, it was such a like interesting, um, first few days, mm-hmm. but our chemistry in Malibu was insane. Like the way that you know, you always see us when we are having a conversation, tough or not, like we're holding right. hands. He he really just has that level of reassurance to like, hey, this is hard, but like, hear me out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think for us, that was like the strangest thing was putting together the face with um, the voice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, as we moved on through like Dallas, you know, we went through our ups and downs and, and kind of figured it out from there. Yeah. So were you comfortable with his family I know the abortion talk is getting tons of it's being talked about a ton online and did that really make you step back and think I I absolutely I absolutely think that 
the differences that we carry as people, whether it's a friendship, a relationship, the way that we are different is what brings us together, right? Yeah. So I think that um, knowing that we had differences um, amongst our beliefs, if anything, it made me love him even more that he was open to the conversation and he was open to receive my uh, my, my experiences and my beliefs. And so again, like, I just know that life is hard and doing life alone is hard. Doing life with a partner is probably even harder once you're married. So in my eyes, like what I took home from that interaction was that this is someone that I can have a hard conversation with, that he will respect me, um, and not, um, at the time when we met his family, um, I just I just think that it was something that I was willing to um, accept as differences, right? And 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 respectfully have differences. Yeah. When you guys go to the shared living spaces, I'm assuming they're just like apartments that are rented out by production, so that everybody so everybody's right there in the same complex, correct? Yes, we all lived in separate apartments, but at the same, yeah. So are there restrictions on what you can and can't do with your partner out in public, even though you're engaged outside of the pods, obviously, but for, to keep spoilers at a minimum, are you guys not allowed to go like grocery shopping together or anything like that? So actually some of our best dates were off camera. And and so it was just like, um, it was just really like a, a a trial of like, okay, we can be a couple on camera, but can we be a couple like when cameras aren't rolling? And um, like we went shopping to the mall one day and I was like, oh my God, this is so normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, um, I think honestly, that was even more time that we used um, to be able to bond because we have such a limited time that if I was working all day in my real estate business and I'd come home and I'd have two hours before bed, um, or if it was like a morning, um, you know, little 15 minute interaction that we would have, like we really tried to put our whole hearts and, um, and effort into being in a relationship. So with Bartice saying, I do not at the wedding, and I really, this is one of the first times where I, I really didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know how it was going to turn out when you guys made it to the altar. And I know you made the comment that you blindsided me. Are the, I mean, are, I'm assuming there are rules where you guys cannot reveal what you're going to say up at the altar beforehand. There are actually no rules about... No. Um, saying your answer before. Mm-hmm. Bartis and I, he made me a promise um, when we first moved to Dallas that he would not blindside me, that we would continue to talk. If he had doubts, we would continue to work through our problems. And this is like day one in Dallas. Mm-hmm. So I think for me, like I do want to take you back to about halfway through our relationship. Um, we were having a conversation in the living room and I said to him, you know, you're not the person um, that I fell in love with. Like you're showing me someone else. And for me, that was my, I'm out mm-hmm. um, moment because I wasn't seeing the connection of who he was, who I fell in love with, his core, who I thought I knew. Mm-hmm. I wasn't seeing that in the real world. And so having that conversation, that disconnect there, um, he, he wanted another chance. He really wanted to put his best foot forward, really try to embrace our relationship and really turn things around for us. And, and I want to give an example, like every day that you're dating in this experience, every day that you're dating, it's like you're dating for three months. So then the next day is like another three months because yeah. we're getting deep. We're having conversations. I mean, he's never lived with a woman before. So, you know, um, so I think it was like at the point that I said, um, my opinion about like, I don't think this is going to work for us. He really wanted to turn things around on his behalf. He took that responsibility. He apologized for making me feel like I did, like he, I wasn't loved enough. Mm -hmm. And um, so leading up to the wedding, 
everything that you see as far as like our last dates, the words that he was using, the we, the us at our reception, my wife, like in the future, our kids are, it was all um, futuristic relationship, you know? So I'm very, I'm a good listener. I know that about myself. I'm a really good listener. And so when I hear his words, but then I'm also seeing his actions that he is really putting his best foot forward with the uh, romantic side of our relationship. For me, it was, okay, this man is really, really showing me and telling me that he wants to do this. I think the biggest blind side of it all, like where I'm like, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Um, Was he sent me the shot glass uh, five minutes or so before the aisle. And he wrote, let's do the damn thing. I'm sorry, what does, what thing are we doing? Because to me, it was, let's get married. I took it that way too. I think everybody did. Any doubt that I had, like, let's say it was 10%, like I might say no on the, when I get up to the altar. Yeah. To me, that shot glass, that note, love Bartise, like that to me was, okay, he's willing to take this leap. He took the leap with my, with proposing to me. He took the leap with staying together in Dallas. He turned things around for us. This person is really in it the way that I have been in it since the beginning. Um, that was my validation that, that I kind of needed to push me to say yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, I think that's where the word love is blindsided <laughs> uh, really happened for me. Yeah. Right. So, and he seemed like he was willing to keep dating afterwards and, you know, keep doing things as they were. And you were the one who said, no, if you don't know today, then this is not the relationship I want for me. So, Did you ever reconsider that? Like, are you guys still in contact at all today? Or, you know, not specifically today, but, you know. Yeah. So after, after he said no, Mm -hmm. um, I I did give him the chance to just kind of tell me what, where he was feeling. But to me, it was black and white. I Mm -hmm. gave you my all. You saw who I was. You felt who I was. You love me, but you don't love me unconditionally because if you did, then it wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been blindsided at that point. I felt betrayed and maybe it's me, the Scorpio, uh, you know, kind of like you betray me and you're out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it was, I think it was, I felt so betrayed. I felt like, um, him betraying me made me feel like I dis- I was betraying my family because I, I I really did express to them how much I loved this person and what I was willing to do for this person. And the fact that I fell in love with the core of who he was. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I think that was like the biggest slap in the face. Um, And so for me, it was, no, I I do not want to continue any of you. Um, yeah, so so we we are on talking terms. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think for us, it's really remembering that all of our friends that went through this, that our castmates, um, there's no one else that will understand our experiences that we've gone through. Season one, season two, I think there's a lot of yeah. um, that alumni type of relationship mm-hmm. that we've done it before too. But um, at the time, we just had each other. Uh, meaning the couples and then the group, the girls as a, as you know, a support yeah. system and the couples as a support system. So are the weddings all done on the same day? I, cause you guys do, the girls do seem really close from this season. So I was kind of shocked that we didn't see any of them at your all's wedding. And I didn't know if that was just not allowed or if, or how it worked. Yeah. So every wedding was done on a different day. And were you guys allowed to attend the other's weddings or no? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure. So would you do the experience again? Would you ever sign up for it again? Short answer, yes. To me, love is blind. Okay. What I was able to experience, what I was able to feel is something that um, I've never felt before. And so I think that knowing who I was coming into it as a whole person, financially, career oriented, mm-hmm. like I... I had met so many goals up to that point that I was ready to love. And so I think when you watch my story and you watch how hard I loved and how judgment-free I really was with my partner, um, 
I was ready for love. And so I think the fact that um, the outcome was what it was, I think if anything, um, I just thank Bartiste for saying no, because I think that having a half-assed husband would have been so much worse than, um, than you know, him saying no, or yeah, having it, you know, that yeah. versus <laughs> not a husband. So, right, no, I don't really get it. Yeah, I'm so grateful to have been given this opportunity um, to be a part of this experience. And mm -hmm. honestly, the love that I had for myself before the show was already a lot. And so even after, like, it just validated that I love who I am and I will stand for what I stand for. And I've gotten this far in life and I will continue to um, do what I do and be the person that I am.